You are listening to the Red Roots Podcast. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh man, Melinda's <laughs> ready today. <laughs> Extra I effort in. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he has effort. <laughs> I wasn't afraid of overdoing it. Do you want to do this today? What? What do you mean? Your microphone's not on. Oh. That will do it. Oh, did they hear my good morning? Uh, Probably through our microphones, okay. but not through yours. Good morning. Oh, you're back. That was a lame one this time. Does it count? <laughs> Everybody doing well? Yeah. Yep. It was a good week. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Anything important or fun or interesting happened this week? It's hard to think about. Like, mm. when was this week? <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like the days are literally all the same yeah. at this point. Fun and interesting. Our daughter did uh, uh, made a YouTube video, and her goal is to surpass um, how many scripts? I, I think the church's YouTube subscriber. Oh yeah, See, it's always a competition. <laughs> well, the church doesn't have many YouTube. Subscribers. I mean, not YouTube. Um, TikTok? TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna happen because it goes up too fast. Well, I, I don't know what's wrong with our girls, but like anytime Ramon's trying to celebrate this, you know, like, hey, we got another subscriber or whatever, or we got another Wait, like. How many you got? How many? <laughs> uh, and then one time jo- uh, Jolie went in and unliked the church's page <laughs> just so we could lose a subscriber. <laughs> yeah. Haters. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Anything new with you? No, no. I just remember it being cold last yeah, week. It was And cold. not enjoying it. It was, <laughs> it was cold for like two days, right? Yeah, it I mean, felt it like, like a lifetime. I don't, yeah, it, it, felt, it felt like a month. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know what is. What, I don't know what it is in Celsius, but it's like fifty degrees between fifty and sixty during the day uh, Fahrenheit. And but in Celsius, you know more or less what it was. Like Thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, not fun. It's, and it doesn't sound to listen. It doesn't sound cold because it's, honestly, it's not yeah. that cold. One is we've gotten used to being ninety degrees all the time or whatever. Mid thirties. Yeah, mid thirties. <laughs> um, but. Also, like these buildings aren't insulated. No. So whatever it is outside, it is inside. Yeah, because we don't have heaters. Inside yeah, we don't either. have heat or any. Yeah, it just is what it is. Mm-hmm. Like fifty degrees outside, fifty degrees inside, thirteen degrees outside, thirteen degrees inside, so on and so forth. So it's um the good thing is only a few days. It only lasted yeah. a couple, like two or three days, but it did. It felt like a, mm-hmm. it, like honestly, it felt like a week. I feel like it was like that for a week, and it was only two days. Yeah, it's rough because then your body. Simon and I were just talking about how our skin was super dry, and then lips got all chapped. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> we suffered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my nose was all dry. It's yeah. still dry. They got you know, fun times. But I don't know. I, I think I prefer the heat. But mm-hmm. yesterday got hot, <laughs> so I was like, and uh. then we went in cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. People. Yeah. Anyways, so today. What we want to talk about is does saying goodbye get any, get any easier? Does saying goodbye get any get does saying goodbye? <laughs> you want me to read that? <laughs> beep, beep, like cut cut. <laughs> does saying goodbye get easier? Does it get any easier as you go with time and so on and so forth? Um, goodbye is obviously a thing that you know I, we don't say it as much as people think we do. I think you that's because we don't travel that much. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but that's what I mean. You only say it when you're traveling and stuff, and so. Um, yeah when so oh i guess your situation is going to be different Mm -hmm. so uh was it well let me ask you this first was it hard to say goodbye like when you left to your parents and your friends and such Mm, not really because there's this there's an air of excitement about it as well because you know what it is that you're going to obviously there's there's nerves um and there's you know things building up to it but I don't know about you guys, but for me, the like the build up was so long. Like I knew like six months before my leaving date that I was going to be leaving. Um, and so you've got all that time building up to it and you're like, okay, I want to visit as many people as I can, mm-hmm. say goodbye to as many people as you can. So you're kind of saying goodbye almost like a month before yeah. you're actually leaving. So you're so tired of saying goodbye by the time that it's your actual date that I don't think I really took it in properly. Yeah. Like, I remember. I remember the the hardest moment was at my air, uh, was at my airport at the airport. I don't own an airport, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that was the hardest moment because it was like obviously my mom, my dad, and my sister were there, 
you know, and they were like one minute they were absolutely fine and they were smiling and like saying goodbye and have a And I like I joined the queue, I look back and then my mum was just like crying. Oh, yeah. I thought you I thought you were gonna say she was just gone. Like, <laughs> no, no, like, yeah, well. she, she, she was like, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. Yeah. She was like, I promise you I won't cry when we get to the airport. She was like, I'll be strong for you and you know, I'm really happy, I'm excited for you. And she and then it was only when I joined the queue that's when she started crying and she was like, No, we have to go because I can't hold it in anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and then said, you look back and yeah, she was gone. Then, yeah, then they just said, Look, we're gonna go. Um, yeah. Mum's mum can't do this anymore. So I think leave. the airports are hard. Yeah, right? it, yeah. It, it's not helpful though to stand there and watch. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's a reason to do it, but it is like at the end of it, it's almost, I mean, this is probably a false equivalent, an exaggerated, but it's like going to a funeral and you're at the grave site and you're sitting there and watching as they get lowered. That's the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the worst feeling. I mean, obviously, that's way worse than watching, but like equally, it, you know, the, it comes from the same place. Like, you're watching. The person physically leave, like you know, mentally they're leaving, but you're watching them physically leave. It's tough. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I can imagine as a parent, like not even just you're going overseas, but a person that I don't know. First, you're grow, you're growing, you're grown. Like that's mm-hmm. a hard thing, I think. And you're the baby in your family too, as, yeah. as as am I. And so, I think for your parents to see you like doing adult stuff and like not just not talking paying bills because they don't cry when you pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> but to see you like kind of going off and taking these steps in life on your own is probably an emotional experience, you know? And, um, well, I think you're also in a space where subconsciously, I think we feel when we're close to our children that we can protect them. Um, and when you're far away, I can't do anything. If he's mm. sick, if he gets yeah. hurt, uh, I can't even fly there on time to help. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So that, that, that it, compounds scary thing, it. you know, yeah. cause one of the, I mean, your parents want to be there to help you and support mm. you and, you know, love you when, when, when necessary and stuff. And so I, that when that goes away, I think, again, we haven't ex- because our kids, my kids are nine. So mm. like we haven't experienced that. Um, but I can imagine that'd be a tough thing. So did, but did it like pull on your heartstrings when you turned around and saw your mom like crying or were you just like, yeah, eh. that, that was the harder moment. <laughs> that was the harder yeah. moment. But, um, you know, once I had left the airport. And I get my head back in the game, then, then it's fine. <laughs> like skipping the <laughs> Which is really easy to do, sadly, because traveling so long is not an easy easy thing. Like and mentally you have to prepare for it physically. Mm-hmm. You have to always be aware of where's my passport, yeah. you know, don't fall asleep. Is my laptop near me? You know. So it's yeah. it's nerve wracking for me to travel. Yeah, it's it's a bit stressful. And then with I mean with kids and stuff, it's a lot harder because yeah, they just they're kids. Do you, you remember know? the first time we flew to Bolivia? Yeah, I broke down in the airport, started crying. We were in uh, Santa Cruz Airport. I don't know why, what happened at this point, um, but I think I was just tired. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because now you criticize Jolie for doing that. <laughs> yeah, like she's tired. She starts crying by everything. Yeah, I think I was tired. Plus, the, everything was unknown, you know. And and then they're speaking Spanish, and they were asking for things that we had no clue. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are they asking for? Yeah. We already paid for that, and, and so. Like, Go ahead, no, okay. We didn't know if people were like trying to take advantage of us or if we genuinely did forgot to pay some kind of taxes that we owed or whatever. I was just and then I'm talking to him. We had so many bags and then he's frustrated, I'm frustrated, and we start like arguing and I'm like oh. <laughs> I just I didn't know what I want. I just want to cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's like you said though. It's like the weight of all the excitement and like you're ex- you're so excited. Cause like going back to what you said about the build up. You're not building up to say goodbye to people like you are, but you don't think about that part. You think about the thing that you want to do. You know, you want to move to, in this case, to Trinidad. And so you're thinking about Trinidad. It's going to be like this. You're Googling it, right? You're Mm -hmm. like, you're looking at different pictures and like trying to figure you're buying stuff you need. And, you know, it's exciting. You're only thinking about that. You're not thinking about goodbyes. Mm -hmm. And then it does hit you at some point when you, this is goodbye for a while. And there are different little, but it's in doses, right? Mm -hmm. So if you hug your aunt or your grandmother or whatever, you're like, oh, man, like this is, you know, goodbye. But it, it's not all at once. So it's like it's it's tolerable. And then, you know, the airport thing hits you, you know, with the tears and stuff like that. But then like, OK, you, that's the thing. And it, that's the one that almost gets you. But then like you're still excited and you're in the airport and this is the day. So like it just it doesn't it doesn't match. Your sadness doesn't match your excitement because it's yeah. such a buildup. But then you get here. And I think that's what happened to you is you get here and it's like you felt so excited about this this morning or yesterday morning in our case. And we just travel so long. You feel so worn down mm. and it just doesn't feel exciting. Mm. Like it, at the moment you look around and all things like we had never been to Bolivia. So we're stuck in this airport and we have to catch a connecting flight. Like I, I don't know any Spanish. 
Mm. Like, and like she from hearing her grandmother speak. So it's like a crapshoot. Like, <laughs> is this a Spanish word? Or is this just an English word with an accent? <laughs> Yarda? <laughs> like, it's so, you know, and so like then she's feeling pressure because I can't talk. So I'm depending on her to talk. And then I just think in your mind, your subconscious is not like, this is not what I was excited about. And so yeah. I think everything comes crashing down like, oh, yeah. I'm far away. I'm, you know, I feel alone. I feel this and that and whatever. And I think that's what probably would happen. Probably. Here. I don't know. I mean, no clue to but, say. So for you, the first time saying goodbye, was that hard? Um, it wasn't. You cried, I think, right? Well, the first time we say goodbye, we said bye to Becca and Romero and okay, Callie. Romero wasn't even there. He was at work. It was Callie and Becca. Callie, Callie and Becca? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, that was emotional for me because we didn't know, well, we did know when we were coming back. So that's not true. That wasn't that time. Um, I just knew that we were leaving that life behind. Like we yeah. were never mm-hmm. moving back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. We were never going to have our, our family established there and everything that I knew and that we had built up until then was just gone. And so we had literally, we owned nothing except for what we had on because us. We sold, we sold everything. Yeah, we, we, we did. And so it was just, um, it was emotional because I didn't even know when was the next time they were, they are, and they were our, our only family that we saw on a consistent basis there. And so it was, it was hard. The next time we, I knew we were going to see our niece, she was going to be probably three years older. Mm, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it was very hard, emotional time. Yeah, for me, leaving the first time, I think, was like, I, I mean, obviously miss my brother and my sister-in-law. That was the thing. But, like, when you're an adult, like, you, you know what I mean? You've been apart and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But my niece, that like, guy had never been away from her since she was born. I was there when she was born at the hospital, you know. And then, what is she? I mean, she was a little kid. She's probably three or something mm-hmm. at the time we left. And so, you know, we had spent a significant amount of time with her and whatever. And so that was hard mm-hmm. to leave. Um but equally, again, I found myself in that space of like, but this is the buildup. Like we've we've Elisha all of our stuff. Like we just burned. I mean, we didn't burn it. We sold it. I don't know if that's equally as holy or less or whatever. But you know, we got rid of all of our stuff, and uh, to you know to move. So it's like you know, this is the moment. Finally, we get to do it. So it was that. But equally, I was like, man, like I'm not gonna see my niece for a while, you know, and like. And that was kind of a weird thing, but it, but it, again, like you said, you're in the you're in not the hospital. I always do that hospital and airport. You're in the airport and you're in go mode, and so you know what yeah. I mean. You can kind of get over it easily, and then so you know you get through, <laughs> and then we we got to Santa Cruz, and that was a it was a long. I mean, you know, it's a long flight yeah. coming here, regardless of where you're coming from. Um, a lot longer than what you would I think. What it feels like it's going to be in your mind, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But um, so you get here and it's just like it. Let me first say. Bolivia like has improved le- like yeah. Yeah. in the area of professional mm-hmm. for professionalism and stuff like that and even well it's even in like the grocery stores and stuff like it is light years ahead of where it was 11 years ago it's almost to, it's almost to the day we left uh, September 1st or something like that I can't remember yeah anyways oh yeah I think it was like a three, couple a few days from now but Bolivia was Literally, it's, it's literally light years ahead of where it was now. Mm. Yeah, you you arrive at the airport and you weren't even welcomed. No. You know, you just like. Well, I you, mean, you're not the king. Like, I mean, not like the, the king of Oklahoma. I mean, coming I'm to, just saying you're met with like police officers that have their big arms. That's not true. Guns. They didn't have guns at the airport. Where you? Where did you go? Maybe I'm just thinking about the bank. I just remember being <laughs> impacted by seeing these police officers with these guns just freely hanging yeah. out. You're there. from you're from inner city Philadelphia. But their guns are in holsters. In holsters? <laughs> or Is that what you call a belt? I don't know. <laughs> a pocket? <laughs> holsters. Uh, they're not like just you know just out there for everybody to see. It's kind of like no. Nah, at the, arm, at the airport, they don't have guns. It's just it's just cold. Yeah. It's, it's cold lighting. It's a cult. There's not, you know, it just, and you know, you're in a foreign country anyways, foreign to you. And yeah. it's, it's, so it's just, it's, it's a cold welcome. There's not a lot, there wasn't a lot of smiles and stuff yeah. like no. that in the moment there. I mean, and it was just, it was very, just the whole encounter was very cold. Yeah, yeah. And to be completely honest at the time felt very like knowing now what I know, it was very, felt very communist. Like just no one's happy. They're not happy. You're here. They're not happy to be here. They, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, what? This is a lose lose for everybody in this whole situation. Like, we're all gonna lose. Burn this hot, this place down, and this we're all gonna like. That's what it. Yeah, I almost said that again. 
And it was just it's this weird feeling yeah. when you come in. Now it is way different, man. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, welcome to Bolivia. And they open my passport and see I get like that I'm, you know, Bolivia. Oh, welcome home. You're back. Like, I'm like, who are you? Like, yeah, I got nice. nervous last yeah. time I came in. Yeah. And you go to customs and they're just like, like just basically picking you out and digging through all your stuff, trying to question you about stuff that like What's, whose toothbrush is this? Trying to um, make you yeah. pay taxes on anything like it's mine, my guy. Like, do you not see but the wear and tear? that's even gotten better, too. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's light years better. But at the time, all that stuff was terrible, man. Yeah. And like, so you get here and you're like, ugh, I'm so excited to be in this place. It's like, you get, it's like we had a friend who proposed and uh, he did this big thing in front of his church and stuff like that with his girlfriend and asked her to marry him. And like, it's all on camera. And the video's probably still floating out there somewhere. And he's like, well, you marry me in this big show and gets on one knee. And she was like, yeah. Like, and he's like, yeah. And he hugs her. And like, she didn't even put her arms up. Like, she's like, that's what it, it feels like. It's like Pepe Le Pew, this guy. Like, get married. <laughs> like, but, it, you know, it feels like you're so excited to be yeah. here. And it feels like, I'm not saying this is the truth, but it feels like, no, like, oh, they don't want you. And so that, that's a hurtful, mm-hmm. you know, thing or whatever. But anyways, um, so... As time has, you haven't had to say goodbye really since then to like no. short term teams and stuff, mm-hmm. but they don't, you knew, you met them on Monday and on Friday they're leaving. So yeah. it's not like, like on short term mission trips, like everybody's crying <laughs> and hugging and stuff. It's like, guys, you met on Wednesday. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> but so like that, you know, I think <laughs> in a sense, like that's gotten easier. I mean, cause like when you're a teenager, you're like, you feel like these are your best friends yeah. in the world. Yeah. And so that's like now, it's, I have to be careful because I'm like, I can come off as super cold to the teams when they come. Like, all right, we're leaving. I'm like, all right, guys, see you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> and these are my friends. It's not like I, you know, it's not like I don't care. It's just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I guess that part it has gotten easier, I guess you can say. Because you, I guess maybe the goodbye is not easier. The living far away from people has gotten easier. You know what I mean? And so that person doesn't, belong in this part of your life anyway so it was just a treat to get them here yeah hmm. and so when they're you know when they're leaving it's like oh okay i mean you didn't have the expectation like you know what i mean that they're yeah. going to be here for six months or mm-hmm. six years or whatever so it's just like whatever but has it gotten easier for you over the years i, I think saying goodbye there's like two aspects one is like saying goodbye to people that have lived with you like when we we're in Cochabamba, missionaries would come and go, you know, their their mm. furloughs up, so they're going to be gone for a year. Uh, oh, or, they're or, going on furlough. I mean, they're going on furlough, and then they'll be gone for a year. So you just kind of get used to having people in your life for a while, and then knowing that you're going to say bye and not see them for for a bit. Sometimes they'll go on furlough, never come back. Sometimes they'll go on furlough, come back, but then you're not as close as you you were before because mm. that whole year of time. Um, and so that just became just. Re- Routine is part of part of life. Oh, you're leaving now? Okay, have a great time. I remember one time um, we had a going away uh, party for for a friend, and I, I hugged her. We looked at she's not a very very emotional person. I, I hugged her and said, "Well, I don't think we'll ever see each other again. <laughs> so bye." High five. <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so either." And that was it, you know, but, um, but yeah, you, you get used to that and that's become way easier for me to do. Um, uh, as far as saying bye to family, I don't think it's become, um, any easier for me. It's so hard for me to do that because when, whenever we go visit, we see what life, what, um, it's not what life would be every day, but you kind of tend to imagine oh this is what life would be like every day if we lived here we would be hanging out with cousins yeah, all day every day going to the movies together ice skating which which is a fantasy you know that that won't happen if we lived close by but that's what you kind of kind of imagine when you're there and in the moment having fun like oh this is family time you know uh, which which we which i treasure um but but yeah saying saying bye doesn't same by the family doesn't get easier for me. I think I just learned to um, expect it, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and I cry less now. You know, it doesn't mean it's easier. I just yeah. cry less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I always have that knot in my throat whenever I'm saying bye to your parents or my mom mm-hmm. <laughs> or my grandma. I'm like, yeah. don't cry. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense though. You know, because um, it's your family. That's the thing. Is like your friends and stuff that you have here. They were your friends for a time and stuff, and they're still your friends. But it's just different. Like you know what I mean? You didn't. 
grow up around them and they're not somebody's going to be connected to you necessarily uh, like for the rest of your life and so you don't have that expectation either. you know when your family it's a deeper connection yeah so do you think like you're going back in february mm-hmm. for however much time and then coming back mm-hmm. um do you feel like i don't know I don't, do you feel like it's going to be harder this time to say goodbye to your like your your family and friends this time when you leave i don't know um Sorry, I just yeah. made to think about something. Just like, <laughs> gonna go, like, like dang, and I didn't cry. think about that. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be tough <laughs> because I think like there will be that, there will be that like full sense as you were talking about. Like when I go back, it will be really intense for like the first few months, like mm-hmm. seeing everyone every weekend, always out, always doing something. Um, and so I think to leave like that straight away, mm-hmm. that would be harder because you're like, oh, that was so much fun. Like yeah. I was with my friends every weekend, and yeah. we're doing this and we're doing that, and we're hanging out and. You know, I, I saw my family and I've traveled around and it's like, oh, now I'm leaving that again. But knowing that that isn't the reality of what life is like when I live in the UK, like I'm not doing things every weekend. I'm not meeting up with people every weekend. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having that mindset of, okay, that wasn't, you know, that isn't reality. It was nice. It was nice to go back and see everyone, but that isn't how life is normally yeah. anyway. Um, yeah, I think it helps as well that everyone, all of my friends and my family and things like that support the fact that I'm here. Um, which obviously mm. helps because there's no like, oh, why are you doing that? Yeah, there's no drag negativity. You know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Trying to, trying to um, spoil it or you know, trying to keep me somewhere or mm. uh, biased or something. You know, people are very much you know make your own decision um, based, which is really helpful. Um, I think yeah, the the biggest thing is like because I, I don't know if I'm going to put a time limit on it next time. Mm-hmm. This time yeah. I knew it was two years. And say so it was like, yeah. okay, it's two years. I'll be back 2021. Mm-hmm. I could say that with certainty. Yeah. I knew I was going to be back 2021. Whereas I think next time it would be a, I don't know. I yeah. don't uh, Two years, five years. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You know, Cause the people you'd go back for is to see your family. But mm. if your family comes see you, do you then need to go back six months later? You know, all those things yeah. that haven't worked. Absolutely. So they say, oh, I'll come back in two years. But if my family come out and visit a year and a half later, I'm not then going to go back to the UK to see my family who I just seen yeah six months, months ago, ago whatever, yeah. or whatever yeah um so it's like working through all of that and not knowing like not being able to say to people like yeah I'll be back in 2024 yeah um I think that that would be slightly harder because it'll be a yeah I don't know when I'll be back um and knowing that life events are going to happen when you're away people are going to pass away and yeah. people are going to get married people are going to have children um things are going to go wrong and you're going to find out via social media or things like that um that's hard like, yeah and knowing like okay these things are going to happen and i'm not going to be part of that like i'm leaving that you mm. go back and you rejoin their world for these six months that you're back there yeah. and you're you're invited to everything and then you're leaving but you know in their lives are going to continue as well obviously and you're no longer yeah. going to be part of that um, yeah i think that's the harder thing to mentally process you know obviously there are things i would go back for like if my sister gets married mm-hmm. i'll go back for my sister's mm-hmm. wedding and things like that you things you would fly back for yeah. um but the other things, having to pick and choose, like, okay, what do I spend a thousand pounds on to go back for? <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's a lot of money to yeah. a return flight. And so you're like, okay, I can't just keep popping back yeah. uh, for a long weekend or something, you know? Um, yeah. So I think that that's the, the more mental difficulty with it. I think people, people assume that if you go back frequently that you will miss family less. But I think it's the opposite, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You never get to really... You, you're always living in two worlds and you're living in one world is what the truth is i mean at that point and the world but the, that's typically a good thing but that world that you're living in is not here if you're going back so often hmm. you know what i mean then you're you're just focused yeah. the reason you want to because you like it's like he's saying you don't want to miss out because that's a terrible feeling and like we felt like that like stuff happens and no one tells you mm-hmm. about it like big stuff yeah like uh, oh you're an uncle again like no like, no i mean i'm just making that didn't happen but like you know, like stuff, and it's not that people, it's not, people aren't being like intentionally, like it just is what it is. You're just not, you're not around and whatever, you know, whatever. And so life moves on. And I think it hurts you when their life moves on. But that ties back to what we've talked about before on here. It's like the importance of establishing your life here mm. and like having friends. Cause like, if you don't have friends here, all you're gonna do is look back at your friends at home and see what they're doing and just be like, man, oh. and you feel lonely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. not only lonely but then you feel left out because they're moving on they're making and they're all at the wedding together all posing for pictures and you're like picturing yourself photoshopped in on the side like you know what i mean you're like oh, i could have been there you start like fantasizing like had i been there 
it, you know, whatever. And then you feel like you feel terrible. And a big part of that is not because you, you're never going to not miss your friends. That's just uh, that's silly and unrealistic. Mm-hmm. But equally, you get into this dilemma to like now when I see my friends doing stuff, I don't think like I wish I, I sometimes I'm like, I wish I was there. But equally, I think about like back here. I'm like, oh, I can't be around my, you know, my friends and like family here. Yeah. So it's like you get caught in this thing. But mm-hmm. equally, it's it's good to be like it's not rocking a hard place because it's two positives. Right. But it's equally to like yeah, equally. What am I saying that for? It's better to be to have good here. So like you missed out on this, but I have this mm. instead of like not having this and being like, man, I just missed out on that. Yeah. And then you're whatever. Cause that's the, and what you're saying about, to your point about, um, you're coming back for an indefinite amount of time, whatever. Now it's going to be, I think it's going to be harder because people are rightfully so people that love you are going to want to spend more. Cause they're like, well, I don't know when I'm going to see you again. Mm. So they want to, you know, get all the time they can in and that. And it does, even though you know it, it does become this like, you start believing that this is what life is going to be like. Mm-hmm. And this, but that's not like when you move there, you don't even see them. You probably see them more like. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. The reality here. is you see everyone about three days before you leave or everyone's trying to cram into seeing mm. you right before you leave. And it's like, I, and then someone, you don't get to see a few people because it's like, I can't fit it all in in the last three days. <laughs> yeah. That's my thing. It's like, oh, he's, it stinks when I go back. Like I, I just can't spend time with everybody. Because, like, I'm glad that people want to spend time, but, like, I'm traveling, but then equally I want to spend time with my family, you know, like my parents and yeah. my grandparents and stuff. And so, and, and to be quite, I like, I get all the time I can with them, mm. you know what I mean? And not that no one else is important, but comparatively, really mm. kind of aren't, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, so it, it's just a tough thing. But what has been, for you, has there been a moment that was the toughest to say goodbye Um, I don't know. Can we come back to me? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, it's me and you because he's like, he's, <laughs> how about you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do have a time. I think it was 2012. I remember it like, cause saying goodbye. Sorry, let me say this first. Saying goodbye has never been super tough for me. Uh, I don't know why I can't, I have no idea why it's just not been super tough. I think a part of it's logical, like before like I knew I was coming back in a month like, you know what I mean like so or whatever you know um but it's never been super even when I went to college and stuff it just wasn't super uh but you're again you're excited and stuff so it had never been super tough for me there was one time that it was like I wasn't I wasn't about to have it like um I would I mean when me and Jalen went to the states so Aww. If you don't, I mean, if you, if, I guess I'll say the whole thing. So people that don't know situation, cause I don't know if you know. So when we came, we got here in 2009, we left, then we came to raise money. Then we came back in 2010 When we came back in 2010, Melinda was pregnant. Um, fast forward, the girls are born, um, 2011, March, 2011. Um, so we're, so we're doing the adoption process for Jolie. That means you can't leave the country for two, two and a half years. Or something like that. And so, because I mean, you're until the process is over, is what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. The, the, the adoption process takes two to two and a half years. And you can't leave with a kid that's not, you know what I mean? Le- yeah. I mean, you, you can get permission and stuff, but it's it's a little bit shaky and it's frowned upon even. Our lawyer was discouraging it. We mm-hmm. didn't qualify for a permission. It had to have been like a medical issue and a lot of, uh, and people who did get Lied, it lied about probably it. Probably lied yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we, we just weren't going to do that. Anyways, um, so. It, but we needed to, we were hurting financially. We needed to raise some money. And so I was like, all right, I need to go to the States. But equally, I was like, man, I don't want to leave her with these two little one, one and a half year olds. And so somehow, I don't remember the conversation. We came to the decision, like, I'm going to take Jalen because Jalen can leave. Mm-hmm. And our family had never met. Yeah, they had, they had never met the girls. Uh, my my parents, parents had when they were born, but no one else had met the girls. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take Jalen. There's a lot of personal stuff going on at that time, like a lot of, and I'm not going to get into it on this, we'll talk about it maybe another day, but there was a lot of personal stuff. That was the hardest time for me, uh, just as far as missions and ministry and uncertainty and like, just feeling like, uh, this is not. And it, so me and Jalen went to the States, we were there for a month, Yeah, month like a month, and a month and a half. And so, you know, it was great. Jalen's meeting all of her cousins. She's meeting her aunts and uncles, great grandparents, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And she's being like the perfect angel. Like, hard to believe, but she's not, <laughs> she's not bad. She's just Jalen. Um, but, 
Like, you know, she's one and a half, just a little toddler. Like, she's, she was great. And everybody's taking her everywhere and, you know, like, just celebrating her and stuff. So that was really cool to see. But you see all this, again, this false reality. Mm. But on the other side, but it, it, it's partially false reality, right? Because this is my family. And even though it's not going to be every day, like, we are going to be around each other. And so you have that and you just feel this, like, home feeling. Not in a, not in a place. But just the people that you're around, you feel home and you feel loved and you feel free. And like, just again, all this mental stuff that we're just trying to figure out and trying to figure out how to deal with and whatever. And anyways, did the whole trip. I made that story too long. Did the whole trip. (laughs) Get to the airport. My dad takes us to the airport. And I'm like, I already was feeling like, like, uh, I didn't want to go back. I'll just be honest. I didn't want to go back. And like, ever. That, that, let me be clear about that. I, like ever, I was I was done. Like a lot of people, I haven't told a lot of people this. I was done, and it wasn't it wasn't because I hate Bolivia. It wasn't because it is. Again, we'll talk about it another time. Anyways, I would just say I was done, and so got to the airport and said goodbye to my dad, and he hugged. He was hugging Jalen, and then he hugged me, and when he hugged me, like I felt the tear come down my face. I promise you, I just turned around and grabbed Jalen and walked off. Said bye. Like, <laughs> Because had I stayed there for another second, like, I, would, I, I, I don't know if I could have left. The, I mean, obviously, <laughs> Melinda and jo- if Melinda and Jolie had gone with me, I, would, I wasn't going back. Mm. I just wasn't going back. So it was like, obviously, see God's, like, God's hand at work. Because, I, like, I would not have gone back. There's no doubt. No doubt. I would have been like, you know, I ain't going back. Like, that's how, for me at that moment, that's how bad it was. And you know, like, how much, I, mm. like, I love doing this and whatever. But that's how bad it was for me at the time. Like, I, like. Nope, no. Nah. But they were back. They were here. So there's no way. And so I felt like so conflicted, and I felt like I was leaving this safe place, mm-hmm. the safety net. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of like that I needed at that time. Of this, and it's not that people don't support me from afar. Like you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like calling, checking up on me. But at that time, like I'm at the airport, and it was like the the reality of like I was. We we're going through all this frustrating time and whatever, trying to figure stuff out. And I got to a place selfishly because my wife is still in it. Like, I got to a place to where it was like, oh, like, it felt so good. And just to be like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not just outside of the situation and whatever. And so, like, I got there. And then I, the reality of me having to go back to that was like, no way. You know what I mean? Like, again, I know this is a false reality, but it was perfection for a time. Yeah. And then having to leave perfection and go back to be- imperfection, for lack of a better word, was like, no way. Like, this is terrible. That was the single hardest time I've ever had saying goodbye. Mm-hmm. And I took Jay and I carried her. And, you know, babies just look at you all weird. Jay, because I'm holding her like this. <laughs> she pushed away and, like, looking at me. And she always frowned. And she's like, <laughs> has her frown face looking at me like, what's wrong with him? And, like, I'm walking through the. And then, like, I'm walking through and, like, I wipe my eye. And the lady says, yeah, goodbyes are hard. I'm like, get off me, man. Get off me. Like, like, like he knows him. Hey, move on. Well, like, you know how Western are sweet. No, no, no. Like, I'm, I mean, she wasn't being nosy. I'm just, I'm, I'm being silly. But that was, for me, that was the single hardest time to say, because, like, I didn't want to I didn't want to leave. I did not want to say goodbye. Had some, like, hey, man, it's just a miracle. Because had someone, had my dad or my mom called and be like, hey, you know what? We're going to figure out a way to bring Melinda here. Just... Can you stay here for another month? Oh, uh, yeah. Probably even like, not another month. I'm not leaving. Like, I'm done. Obviously, I'm glad we went back. And God taught us so much stuff in that year that we were there. And, like, it, was, it wasn't an easy time. But, like, we learned so much about ourselves and about ministry and about... And we really, I think, in that year, we really developed our ministry philosophy and prioritized what's important in ministry and really were able to dig into the Word and see what... Um, what not what we what my friend says or my pastor says or my parents say or what I say. What does Jesus really value in ministry the most? Mm. And I think in that in that dark time, like is when, ironically, the brightest moments came were birthed in that you know dark weird time. And uh, but anyways, that's not the topic. The topic was <laughs> the hardest. So anyway, so did, have you had a hardest time? The time that's the was the absolute like it was a, a memorable time, I guess you can say. They were like, man. Saying goodbye was hard. Yeah, it- well, you, well, you mentioned something that made me think. Um, I do remember specifically the one of the hardest times was when um, when we first not first came for like our our visit, but they call it a scouting trip. But the first time we came um, for our three year commitment because we knew we were pregnant, 
And uh, I just thought, I didn't know what it looked like to raise a, a child without your family mm. because mm. my grandparents were so involved in raising me and um, my mom was so involved in raising my, my nieces. And so that's just what you expected, you know. You just, like, how am I going to do this in a different country without my mother, my sister, my... Um, my in-laws, no, no one, you know, even though we lived in a different state and I know that they wouldn't have been there physically every day, at least your parents would have come frequently, you know, mm -hmm. they would have driven or flown or whatever. And we could have gone back and forth or my mom back and forth to, to visit us and, and to see the girls. Um, but specifically, um, my grandfather, he was sick for a really long time. And so mm. we never really knew you know, when was going to be his last day. But I knew that he was the more, every time I saw him, he was a little bit more sickly. So mm. I, it was, as a teenager, I used to prepare myself to like, what am I going to do when my grandfather dies? How am I going to react? Like in bed at night, he was not dying anytime <laughs> soon, but I'm mentally preparing yeah. for this crying, you know? So when I, I remember leaving Philadelphia and not knowing about, um, not knowing whether my grandfather was going to live or die. I didn't know. I can't, I can't sit here and say I knew he was going to die. but um, You knew you were going to be gone for a long time. I so, knew we would be, a while, be gone for a while. And so I knew there was a possibility mm -hmm. within this time frame that he would pass away. And, um, and he did. And so that, that hurt me knowing that he didn't get to meet the girls or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. But that buy specifically was hard because... Um, because uh, I was pregnant. And so it probably had a lot to do with hormones too. But, but then, well, he passed away. As that trip that I was talking about, me and Jalen flying to the States mm -hmm. while we were in the air to Miami, I landed in Miami and like connected to Wi Fi. My phone like just, like literally was overheating, <laughs> overheating in my, like it just, it was going, but it's text from her, from every, like my mom and like it, it you know, because we were flying. Mm -hmm. We didn't, you know, have any whatever, yeah. uh, uh, whatever, signal or whatever, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, that's tough, too. Like, when you don't know, like, you know what? Yeah, that's tough. There's another time, though, that I completely ignored. It's when we left Bolivia. When we left Bolivia, and we, like, we weren't coming back. Oh, no, that might be all of, all that of my That was the time of all times. times. Yeah. So, it kind of connects to what I was talking about. We were going through a bunch of hard, tough stuff or whatever. Um, so, me and Jalen went on that trip. We came back and we, we served another year. We had to finish the adoption, but we also we committed for three years. And so we had another year left of our commitment. And also uh, we had to finish Jolie's adoption process, which coincided perfectly, mm. which is, I think, is by uh, divine design. <laughs> um, but like we well, then we had to leave like then we, we 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 didn't have to leave. Like no one made us leave, but we had to leave like for us. Like it was we. We could not have stayed here. There was so much stuff going on and like we had to leave like, but equally we did not want to leave at all. But we did. We knew that it. We, mm. we knew that we had to go. And so there was this huge conflict of, of interest on the inside of you of knowing what's best for you, what you have to do. Because of circumstances beyond your control, but equally like your friends and people that you have just dug in life with and committed because it goes back to when we said it felt cold and communist when we got to the airport but then like our home church in Cochabamba like they loved us man when we came like I was hol hola like <laughs> couldn't even hola probably like oh my Appalachian accent hola like couldn't speak I couldn't speak any uh, they loved us but like yeah they just us. they embraced us man and took us and taught us like so much stuff about the culture and like we go to people's houses and the, when the girls were born, like, I mean, oh, they everybody, became like adopted grandparents yeah, and like, aunts. And we hit the know. door on Sunday morning. We didn't hold the girls until it's time to go home. Like mm -hmm. they're just, you know, people were like loving and pay, it was such a great thing. And so we had to leave that. We've never had that. I have never had that in a home church, um, that level mm -hmm. of being loved and cared for. And it even like being groomed to be a leader in the church and having the church members like cheer me on and supporting you. How times have changed, huh? Like, <laughs> but like, you know, just being this young new guy coming up and like people are encouraging me to, to try my Spanish and be, you know, like, gr like growing up there really and in, in, in ministry really. And it was a big, it was a big moment. And even growing up, like just as people, cause we had kids and stuff and 
people like giving us unwarranted and sometimes terrible parenting <laughs> advice, but equally <laughs> involved. And like, there's a guy that would bring us diapers every once in a while at church. Yeah. And like, so you just, you know, it's part of this like community that definitely has its deep issues and is not as healthy spiritually as it's supposed to be, but equally people that do love and care about you. And so I was like, so now we have to leave that. We had just we got close to to Rudy and Georgette, and you uh, you know Georgette, mm-hmm. Rudy, Georgette, Sue, and Josue, and Richard. Um, mm-hmm. We worked together in the youth group, and like we just, I mean, we spent our last th- three to six months. We probably spent almost every single day with Rudy, mm-hmm. like, and that's how that's how we became close. It's mm-hmm. like, I mean, but even before that, we you know we got close. But then at and then those, those guys would come over our house like every several. Day. They would say till two in the morning. Yeah, like several, at least several <laughs> times a week, a few times a week. We'll, we'll say that just to be fair. And so we just spend a, a ton of amount of time together, and like they're essentially my kids, like aunts and uncles, the, the equivalent of that, right? Of what they have physically. Uh, my kids have aunts and uncles, so they don't need new ones. But my <laughs> point is, is like, hmm. you know, on the ground or whatever. Like the people that my kids identify with and see every day, and love them and care for them, and you know, bomb gifts and whatever. Like so, we had that. And we had to leave that behind. And I, I was a wreck at the airport that time. Like, I was so, I was, I've never been, I don't know if I've ever been so angry. Because I was just angry that we had to leave this, you know. And, and I mean, it didn't help that so many people showed up to the airport to yeah. say bye. I'm like, y'all could have just said bye for a moment. And they're all crying and like, yeah. everybody's, you're not crying, I'm crying. Or, I'm not <laughs> crying, you're crying. Like, everybody's right. Yeah, because everybody, like, and so that makes it worse. And like, yeah, like, I mean, my face was like covered. Because I, I, I was so... Yeah, de- definitely tears of sadness, but also like anger, man. I was so angry mm-hmm. and like that goodbye was so hurtful. It was such a deep, hurtful thing. And then, you know, you start overanalyzing like why. And then it's like the reason was just stupid anyway. You know what I mean? Like this could, this should work out. This should be where we are and whatever. And so it was, that was, a, that was a tough one. Because especially at that time, we were certain that it was a final goodbye. Mm-hmm. We were never coming back. Never going to see these people again. Yeah. Ever going to see these people again. These people that have become your best friends and family and stuff. Like we were saying a minute ago, is like, you can't be there, so be here. And you've, we've, I don't want to say new best friends, because that makes it like we don't, we're not friends with our old friends. But definitely like best friends that you can be around and come to your house and have dinner with and whatever. And I mean, because it was Tom and Abby and there's Rudy. Like, so there's just, you know, and then, yeah, I mean, family, Duran and Angie were like family to us. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and so all these people and like, so we have to say goodbye to this. And like, it was like, nah, this is terrible, you know, because I feel like we did the right thing by digging in, but then have to and not just say goodbye to it. Like, it's good riddance. So that is essentially like watching the coffin go down because it's like, yeah, because we like we're never coming back that mm. we were never coming back. And so it was like. We stayed in touch with Rudy. Like when Rudy came to the Dominican Republic, it was like, I thought I was never going to see this dude again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so that was cool. But then like right after that is when it kind of started like, oh, maybe we can go back. And that was, you know, but, but, but until then, like we had no idea. We no idea we were going to come back here. No, no, not only no idea, no intentions yeah. at all. Like we were not coming back here. And so that was a tough one. Like it was, it was literally like going to a funeral of all of your closest friends. And it's basically like, because... At the time, people used like social media and stuff, but it wasn't like the same as mm-hmm. it is now. You don't just FaceTime somebody then. You know what I mean? Like not here. I mean, maybe in the States or whatever. Skype is, was the only one doing it. <laughs> how, it's funny how that happens. Like the first one gets to it now is like the lamest. <laughs> Skype is like the lamest application. <laughs> but like, so it wasn't, you just weren't going to have contact with mm-hmm. most of these people. It just it was over. And then, you know, obviously... I mean, now it's a little bit different because you can chat with somebody literally from the airport, like as soon as you walk away from them or whatever, but yeah. you couldn't do that. So it was good riddance essentially to a lot of people. Like, and that was tough. That was very hard. And I don't wish to do that ever again. It was hard living in the Dominican Republic, our church there, because our church was like, Incredible. our church was healthy yeah. at that point. And like, man, just the, but it wasn't the same because we just hadn't been there that long. And like it, it wasn't the same. Simon's like, how many times y'all had to say goodbye yeah. forever? <laughs> yeah, too many. <laughs> well, we left the states. So we left the states. We came to Bolivia. We were here for three years alone. Three years, and then we left here. And we left here that time. I was talking about we say goodbye. We went to the Dominican Republic. We went to the Dominican Republic. We were there for a year. Before, and that's when things, you know, we decided like, oh, we can go back to Bolivia. I can't believe so. that was a year. It felt like such a long year, like an yeah. eternity of a year. Jason and Karen, like it was really hard to say goodbye to mm-hmm. them. 
But it was like, it, it just like, I think we were more, we were so hurt and jacked up at that time. Like that we were, we got close to them because of who they are and they pursued us and stuff, but we we're still very cautious about how, because you know, you don't want to go through that again. Like mm. if something hurts that bad, like you're kind of like weird or whatever for me at least, you know? And so when we left, it, yeah, that was hard to leave them too, but. But well, well, our girls chat with them, like their yeah. kids. Like, yeah, and that's the thing is like, you know, at that point you're, like, you're starting to contact each other. You could text message across the world and stuff. And so, mm-hmm. yeah. So for me, yeah. Ah, there's, there's two there's two different types of goodbyes, yeah. I guess, you know. Yeah. But those are the hardest ones. I agree. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. So that's our story. So you you leave. <laughs> Simon, you still here? <laughs> so, no, no, when he leaves, like that's what you have to look forward to. No, nah, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's different here. Mm. Simon's like, going to miss us when he leaves, so prepare for that. Mm. I mean, we can <laughs> literally Facetime us like thirty seconds after from the gate. Like, miss you guys. Like, Stop crying. Get on the plane. Now, nah, like uh, our our church here isn't as welcoming and embracing yet as as our church was in, in Cochabamba. Mm-hmm. I feel like our church is healthier here, but ironically, that has not translated yet into mm. that. And but hopefully, at some point, will be that where we can brace a little bit better. You know, when people come from different places and stuff. Also, I think people here are used to people coming and going. Yeah. Because you know, here in the in the clinic, people have volunteers have come and gone for years, and mm. so it's you know, it's just like, oh, hey, there's another guy. Like when Carla said to you the other day, like, and she told me after she said that, like, you're coming back. Why is she asked me, why is he coming back? I said, do you not want him to come back? She was like, no, it's just that, she's like, people usually don't come back. Mm. And so it was like, it was, it's impactful to them that like, oh, he wants to come back. Like, they thought he was done. But equally, I think, I, I know they love Simon, but I see that they don't invest as much into him as a new guy. Like, we, we've invested into them, because we, we've been here a long time, and so it's easier for us to go and like invest in the people. For him, he's coming as new, coming as new, and so we need the community to invest in him. Mm-hmm. And I don't think our community is invested in you as much as one they should have. Um, but equally, I think, too, there's that like, oh, he's going to mm-hmm. leave in two years anyway. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's not excusable, but it, you can kind of get it. Like, cause they spent so many times like investing in people like, oh, that's my best friend. And then like, mm-hmm. pew, and you never hear from the person again, yeah. like literally. And so, you know. Yeah. And I get it as well, because it's like there's always... It's always tricky when you're speaking to someone and you're like, oh, hey, hey you know, because the, co- the conversation naturally comes up. It's like, oh, well, when are you leaving? Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be a conversation mm-hmm. I have now or last year or whenever. Um, and you go, oh, hey, Melinda, when are you leaving? And you say, oh, February next year. And you're like, oh, OK, cool. But in your back of your mind, you're always thinking, oh, they're leaving in February yep. next right. year. So now you, you carry on, you chat to them, you, yeah. you're friends with them, you put food with them or yeah. whatever. But you always know and they always know, OK, this person's leaving in February kind of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've definitely noticed that that affects relationships that I've had with people mm-hmm. has been like, whenever they ask me like, oh, when are you leaving? And I always, cause, because I have a date. Mm-hmm. So almost it's almost like, because <laughs> I have- 18th yeah, to because, 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, because I, because I know my date, it's almost, that almost puts up a barrier yeah. in itself. Whereas mm-hmm. I feel like if it would just be the case, well, I don't know, then I don't know whether things would have been different mm-hmm. or not. Um, I mean, it's not to say that people have been hostile towards me. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but saying like you you notice that it's a common like everyone people that I see every single day ask me when I'm leaving people I see once Mm -hmm. a month will ask me when I'm leaving it's like just a natural Mm -hmm. thing that comes up Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah it is difficult you know when you're trying to be somewhere you're trying to live somewhere and Mm -hmm. chat to people and they're constantly being like so when are you leaving when are you leaving and I think it is because that that expectation of well people just come here and then they leave Yeah. yeah it's just what happens um because yeah, Carla couldn't believe when I was like, no, but I want to come back. She's like, wait, what? You want to come back? <laughs> yeah. Like she just wasn't expecting that at all. She's in her mind, it was, oh, he leaves in February and then life carries on. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's been an interesting dynamic to to work with. And Carlos Pecho, the, not Carlos, that, but the mm, other. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, we were watching Champions League final the other day, and he was there before you, and he said, uh, he, you know, he's a nice guy, so he's just kind mm-hmm. of chatting or whatever, and he said, and well, how's Simon doing? And Rudy was like, I guess he just wasn't like, in, he's like, good. And he said something. And then Rudy was like, he's supposed to come. He's like, oh, he's coming back to Bolivia? Rudy was like, he lives across the street. He's like, oh, he stayed here through the whole pandemic? He's like, yeah. He's like, he stayed here in, in Bolivia through the whole pandemic? Like, Rudy's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I thought he left. I thought he left at the beginning of 
I think he went back to uh, England, I think he said at the beginning of the pandemic. Rudy was like, no, he, he stayed here. He's like, oh, I thought he would have left. Or whatever. So there's that assumption mm-hmm. of like, oh, well, gone. Even him, he's not even a part of like our everyday yeah, thing. Yeah. And so it's like this assumption of like, it's, a, it's just a clock, like, right? Mm-hmm. It's, just t- it's a countdown yeah. of like, as to where, like with us, I think p- people don't know where to put us because like, we don't, so we're just here all the time. And so I think slowly they begin to like just accept that we're just here. Mm. And so that it makes it easier to engage or whatever. And so, but we want to get our church to get to the point to where it doesn't matter. Like mm. we just love people and like engage people and like, you know, with that, engage them with our community feel and love, neighborly, whatever you want to call it, um, regardless if they're going to be here for two weeks or two years or, you know, 20 years or whatever. Mm. And so, but I mean, you just become callous. So really what we're talking about is, is it, has it become, does it get any easier saying goodbye is essentially what's happened to the people here is it's gotten mm. so easy that it's like, ah, eh, he's just here for, you know, a year. He's here for six months, eh, mm. whatever. And so, you know, definitely from that perspective, I want to reverse that a little bit, but definitely understandable equally, mm-hmm. you know. Sure. And so just callous. You get, I mean, something happens all the time and you just callous mm-hmm. to it. You know, you don't, and they're not, no one's consciously thinking like, so I'm going to be here for two years, so I'm not going to invite him over for dinner. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? No one's thinking that, but yeah. So it's interesting. Everybody good then? Mm-hmm. You guys just shut it off. I got to be ready. Like once y'all <laughs> stop talking, like <laughs> it's going gonna, gonna gonna? to be like a silence, you know, and a silent <laughs> gap or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that was a pretty simple, straight yes or no question <laughs> that we were you were able to expand for about an hour i did it by myself like y'all want to talk no to. i'm saying like good for you kudos to the host okay of the red roots podcast where are you What's from that? <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to be simon <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like somebody from bangladesh <laughs> Who learn English from someone I, who was from? Okay, I stopped practicing. Who was sorry. someone from Thailand, and English was their third language? Come on now. Like, <laughs> just watch a little bit more Peppa Pig. And yeah, come back. I'll learn that from day, Joe and Jay. Mummy, chat. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, you got any big plans this week? Uh, I need to finish. The devotional that is written in English, it's complete. So yeah, yeah. I'm going through the process of changing it into Spanish. Exciting. Uh, is that the characteristics of that? Yes. I need to finish that book cover. <laughs> I started it. And so we started, oh yeah, it. we started this week. We did our, um, where we uploaded it. We Our series, our food series, uh, just try it series mm-hmm. of where we try different foods. Did you, did you watch it? No. You're not going to watch it? You watch your own video? I can't watch my own videos. Just find them too cringy. Here, I will. The, I mean, the first one's cringy, but not because of you. Yeah, it's it's not cringy. Be, actually, it's more cringy because of me because I did. It was the first one, and like we don't know. It wasn't cringy. I watched it. It was not. But you guys are so hard on yourself. No, but but uh, but be, just because we like we did we, the idea is solid. But it's getting to the rhythm of like, okay, what is this going to yeah. be? What is it going to be like? And so the, uh, to me, the first one is cringy. It is, and it's not you. This cringy. It's like. It's just the, it's just cringy because yeah. like we don't we're both kind of like yeah feeling it out like okay how yeah, is yeah, this yeah. gonna work I laughed because in the middle of the the video he's like yeah that's what we'll call it just try it <laughs> <I did. laughs> like you didn't work yeah, this out working it out well I said something about it before but like we didn't decide and I was like uh, I think we're gonna do it because like maybe we can change the name going forward and like, then he's I mean, like we, we have to qualify we have to. Uh, qualify it no yeah or so, yeah, yeah in the middle it. he's like okay yeah we're gonna so yeah should they try it's like you're working maybe, the details yeah, out in the maybe middle we'll change it to bang or bust or something like that bang or bust bang bust like this is because but there's some fun episodes coming up not this week's not the next week's but after that i think it's a good <laughs> one and then there's one and then there's the last no there's two did five we did five we did five and so we this is five? suspido this week so we did yeah. uh that suspido and then we did uh it's the next one coming out is like the sugary, sugary yeah, that one, thing. Isn't it? yeah yeah that's tomorrow right yeah and then yeah. it's pasoka i think yeah then it's that was a decent episode pasoka's funny because like disagreed yeah. with that one yeah we did that's the that's i think that's the only one we disagreed on 
Pasoka, and then oh yeah, then the one after that is like the best one I think so far. No, because you got the, the sweet bread comes after that one. Was that first? I mean, the, so the last <laughs> one was was the uh, rice bread. Yeah, the last one. was... I thought the last yeah, one was yeah. the sweet bread because we got. Yeah. The, I said uh, we gotta get the taste out of our mouth. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. last right. week y'all are all like secretive about not revealing what you're doing, and now you're just giving it all out. No, we're just <laughs> saying like it's a good episode. Yeah, we didn't say anything else. We're going to say every episode is a good episode because we did it. But, I mean, until it's out, then we'll go back and say it was cringy. Yeah. That's marketing. There's one part That's of it marketing. where like, hey, what's your favorite food? I just got black. I just got McDonald's. <laughs> oh, yeah. I left. I was like, okay. That's, that was, That's my girl's favorite, like, too. I didn't want to get it because, like, it was... <laughs> I didn't, again, I didn't met now. Like, I'll get into it next time. But like, I'm gonna make a joke. Like, anything off the menu at McDonald's. Like, just everything. The nuggets. The ham, like, what? Is it, he said, he said McDonald's. <laughs> you put him on the spot. Yeah. On the uh, spot. So fun. Was like, the fun. The thing is, is that like, I don't know what I'm gonna say. Like, cause I didn't, I didn't think about it too much. You know, I just started talking. And then, like, but the Think, one, would you have a different answer right now? Right now? Yeah, roast chicken. <laughs> <laughs> roast chicken and mashed potatoes. He goes from McDonald's to Fast roast chicken food to and like mashed potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, I knew that was your favorite. Yeah. The mashed potatoes. Yeah. I think I knew that too, but then he said McDonald's. I'm going to correct the man on what his favorite food is. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's what it is. I, I mean, I, I just took it from the perspective of like, Guilty pleasure, like just like grabbing McDonald's. So, oh, that's just fair. Everything on and this. moved on, you know. I didn't even think about. That. Yeah, like all of it, <laughs> McDonald's. If it comes in that wrapper, yeah. I love it. <laughs> like the sweet and sour sauce, just licking it out of the thing. <laughs> if it doesn't go old in two years, I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fun though. We I will probably have some good ones coming up too. But the the one like we laughed. And, through the entire episode of one. Like, literally, I'm not exaggerating. We laughed through the entire episode. Like, we just had to cut it off. But that's the fun one. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. So, you'll, you'll see it. But it's fun. Yeah, you haven't seen them. No, I guess they're not I all just, done, though. So, Speedo's done. And it's up, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we got videos all through this But that week. one is up. I have to create the thumbnail for it. So, I'm going to watch it today. Cool. Yeah, I think I got videos all through this week, through next Monday. So, I got to film some more stuff. For next Wednesday or whatever. So we got time for that because we're doing renovations and stuff. So church update. What is it called? Church re whatever part seven. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's literally. Is this, yeah, it is. It would be seven. Yeah, like, there's a, a hole in the wall we just painted and we had to knock yep, down. Exactly. So we'll see. All right. So we'll end it here. Um, anything else? No, I'm good. Nope. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate your love and support. And we'll see you next week. Pro Provecho.